Okay, next on the block, we have a PNY flash drive from 2009 with a Fison PS2232BD Revision E controller and Samsung NAND. Interestingly, the date code on the Samsung NAND chip on the back of the chip doesn't match the date code on the front. It's off by a couple of weeks. So the first thing we're gonna do is look for a 5 volt, 3.3 and 1.8 volt rail. So the power coming off the USB connector is five volts, the power going to the fuse, which is a resistor is five volts, and the power on the other end of the resistor is five volts as well. Next, we probe the filter capacitors to see if we can find a five, 3.3 and 1.8 volt rail. I tested the clock with my oscilloscope. Um, the values it was outputting were just all over the place. I don't think it's the clock, but just for the sake of being thorough, I'm gonna replace it anyway. Now we're gonna attach a temporary clock crystal to the circuit board to see if it brings the flash drive back to life. And big surprise, it didn't do anything. So it looks like this flash drive has earned a ticket to an off-chip recovery. Next, we're gonna label the memory chips as one and two, one being the chip that's nearest the controller. Here, I'm gonna use the spatula tip for my soldering iron to remove the memory chip. It makes removing memory chips very easy. You just uh, lob a glob of solder on one side and then stick something under the memory chip and it releases very easily. Now we do the other side and it slides right off. Now again, we do the same thing to the other sides, stick an X-Acto knife under the chip and it releases just that easily. Now we're going to clean the NAND chip up using some flux and some solder wick. And now onto step two where we put the NAND chip inside a reader, read it, and reassemble the image. I already loaded all the configuration parameters in. Um, it's going to take a little while to read the memory chip. I'm going to speed this up because nobody wants to watch a memory chip read, um, but it is a two gigabyte memory chip, so it shouldn't take that long. Three and a half minutes later, it's done reading, so I'm gonna continue and read chip number two. So now we're gonna load the dumps into Flash Extractor. Looking at the page layout, we can see it's a 528 byte page. So now we're gonna search for a layout that um, is a Fison PS2233 uh, layout with a 512 byte page. Um, right now it sees it, uh, it detects that it's the uh, 528B2 variant. Next we use Find Mix, which is an automated tool within Flash Extractor that's very good at finding the mix within uh, older and some newer flash drives. In this case, the first mix step is a join by page two at every 512 byte offset, and the order is dump two followed by dump one. Now we're gonna run find mix again to see if it finds any more steps in the mix. And it looks like it found a block pair, which is a two plane interleave. So we're going to add another step to the mix, which is a block pair and fill in the uh, same values that it found below. Next, we're gonna do another fine mix and see if there are any more steps, but given how fast it's going through it um, and the vintage of the flash drive, I don't see any more steps. So I canceled the operation. Now I'm setting the assembler to block number. Block number uses the block number that's associated with every block in the spare area. You can see the block number in the lower left panel. The block number assembler puts each block together in numerical order to create an image in each bank. The next thing we need to do is find the size of each block. 
For example, this flash drive uses a two megabyte block size, meaning each logical block of data corresponds to two megabytes of physical NAND address space. If we don't find the correct block size, we'll have address conflicts. For example, two blocks with the same address. With older flash drives, the block size is usually the size of the current step multiplied by two. For example, the block pair was one megabyte, so the block size is two megabytes. Now we're going to open up the uh, block number assembler, set the block size to two megabytes, hit scan, and then find bank space. Now we check for address conflicts to see if there are any block numbers with the same value. It says there are none, so we can open the image. So now we're going to open up the file system structure. All the tables look good. We're going to do check files, which checks file headers and directory headers. Everything looks good. No reds, no broken folders. Now we're going to compare the fat tables to see if there are any differences. Everything looks good. Obviously, I can't show you the customer's data, but everything looks good, and it was a successful recovery.